Welcome back. In the last couple of lectures, we talked about pretty intense topics like SOCL, for and while loops, and apex collections. So I wanted to lighten up this lecture. Today, we'll tackle something on the lighter side and also something super fine to work with. Let's start writing some conditional statements. A conditional statement is a coder's way to ask a question and depending on the answer, do one thing or another. You have probably used conditional statements in your admin work, but maybe didn't realize what they were. There are two places that admins use conditional statements. Anytime you set up a criteria for any kind of automation, for example, workflow rules, process builder, or visual workflows, or even approval processes. This is where you would say, if this and that, and these things are true, then run this process. Also, anytime you use the if or the case functions. For example, in formula fields or advanced workflow rules. These are full-blown conditional statements. I hope you are familiar with this screen where we set up the rule criteria for workflows. This form is a type of a conditional statement. If this criteria is true, then the workflow will run. Conditional statements are best understood as if x is true, then do y, otherwise do z. In Apex, these types of conditional statements are called if-else statements. But before we dive into how Apex does things, let's look at something more familiar to us as admins. How we use simple conditional statement in a formula field. If we created a formula field in our custom book object to categorize each book based on the number of pages, we would use the following if function syntax. So thinking of what we want to achieve, let's fill in the three placeholder bits to this conditional statement. This is the test used to decide what value to use. It is equivalent to the logical test in the if formula. Page count double underscore c greater than or equal to 500. This is the value we want the field to hold if the logical test is true, which would be we can read. And this is the value we want the field to hold if the logical test is false, which would be any time read. So if the page count is greater than or equal to 500, then it is a weekend read, else it is any time read. Let's look at how to set up something similar in Apex. The basic syntax of the if-else condition in Apex would look like this. The placeholder bits have different names, but they mean the same thing. Again, filling in the placeholders, we have the following. This is the test used to decide what value to use. It is equivalent to the logical test in the if formula. The reason it's called a Boolean condition relates to our lecture on primitive data types. Boolean variables can only ever be true or false. Page count greater than or equal to 500. This is the code we want to run if the condition is true. In our case, if the number of pages in the book are equal to or greater than 500. System.debug, we can read and this is the code we want to run if the condition is false, if the number of pages are less than 500, that is system.debug anytime read. So our final code would look like this. In real life, I would be pulling the page count value from my database, but I wanted to keep things simple, so go with me on this. So what you see on line 1 is that we have declared a variable page count and set its value to 650. When we run our code, this condition will evaluate to true and therefore the first block of code will run resulting in this. If we had set our page count to 400 or anything less than 500, then the condition would be false and the log would have printed a debug line anytime read. One difference between the declarative version of the if function and the apex if else version is that apex doesn't actually require the else part of the statement. That means you could have choose to run the code if the statement is true and do nothing if it is false. So the following two code snippets are functionally the same. As we know, I prefer to typing less. So no surprise here, I prefer the first version. If we are only dealing with a simple if then else statement, then we can shorten things even more using something called a ternary conditional operation, which contains the entire conditional statement in one super compact line. Something like this. Boolean condition, question mark, statement if true, colon, statement if false. So we could change our code to look something like this. 
this is really short and super sweet. But what would happen if you wanted to have more than two options or if the criteria was little more complicated than this? Let's take a look at how we would handle that in Apex. If we wanted to get a little more sophisticated in our conditional statement, as you can imagine, what about those books that have less than 100 pages, but are pretty complicated and require really good vocabulary skills? There are a couple of categories of books defined based on page count and vocabulary. For example, books that are really long, more than 500 pages, and not easy to read are categorized as we can read. We also have other categories like anytime read, quick challenge, and the odd ones. We are going to see a few different ways to write this and at the same time show you how to nest if else statements. The first version of code I'm going to show you is the most literal translation of the categories above. For each of the categories, we have a separate conditional statement. You can see that we are using the else if clause to specify additional conditions and subsequent code to run if they evaluate as true. If I were to write this out in pseudocode, it would look like this. In Apex, the code would look like this. This is perfectly legitimate code, but as many things in coding, we have options. Let me show you another way to work your if else statements by nesting them. You may have noticed there is some redundancy in our code. We have two lines that have conditions that include the page count greater than or equal to 500 and two lines where the condition includes page count less than or equal to 100. Again, there is nothing wrong with this. But let's try this another way, this time using nested if else statements. So we have a nested if. First, we are checking to see if the page count is greater than or equal to 500. Then we are nesting an if condition and checking for difficulty. If difficulty is not easy, then it's we can read. If it's easy, then it's anytime read. And another else if where page count is less than 100. And another nested if where we are checking for difficulty again. If it's not easy, then it's quick challenge. If it's easy, then it's quick and easy. For all the other conditions, we are printing out system.debug odd ones. So, which version should you choose? Good that we have options, but why would you use the flat version versus the nested one? To some extent, it's a matter of style and personal preference. The first version or the flat version is easier to read, but there are minor processing advantages for both of them under different situations. For example, if we were to run both pieces of code with the following settings, then the flat version would need to process through only one node to know what code to run. The nested version would need to process through at least two decision nodes. So as you can see, there are no hard and fast rules on which version to use. Personally, I tend to default with the flat version because it's easier to read unless there's something in my code that speaks to the nested version. I hope you had fun time figuring out why we use conditional statements. I also hope that you see you're so close to getting to the exciting world of coding. After this lecture, we know if else statements in Apex are functionally very similar to the if functions in the formula fields. They use one or more Boolean conditions that if evaluate to true, run the code. These statements can just have one condition or a string of conditions. We can also nest if else statements and we can also include an else statement in the end that will run if none of the if or else if statements evaluate to true. I hope you found this lecture airy yet satisfying. In the next lecture, we'll talk about Sockle, short for Salesforce Object Query Language.